this is an award for library staff uh, doing all the same sorts of things that we have seen other people doing. Uh, I'm sure you understand that if we don't do this in-house, there's much smaller chance of us working with all of you as a part of the community. And I think the um, sort of awards and, com and uh, entries that we have here will give you an idea of what's happening uh, behind the scenes. So we have uh, seven um, uh, li uh, shortlisted um, projects here, uh, and then um, awards as in other ones. So I'm just going to list them all for you. So the first one is British Library Qatar Foundation Project Imaging Hack Days. Uh, teams Sotra Salpanis, Renata Kampinska, Jordi Klopas Mastun, Rebecca Harris, Louisa Ilardi, Matthew Lee, Daniel Loveday, Darren Murray, Hannah Nagel, and Melanie Taylor. So, um, Carter Foundation is a uh, large digitization project working for library for a number of years, funded by Qatar Foundation, that both digitizes Arabic and uh, material in Arabic and broader, uh, and is working uh, on a um, number of projects in this sort of area. And this was about looking at images, which is a particularly interesting area for us. Um, and the team has go worked on a quite large range of issues that is coming out of the collections with a large number of images to um, learn to learn more and to have more of this experimental thinking that we are doing here applied to our collections. Um, the next one is automatic recognition of early printed Bengali text and historic Arabic writing of the team made of Tom Derrick, Linda Buckler, Nerman Youssef, Yulia Ignatovic, Maryam Aboles, George Salmon, Blink Hallam, Daniel Lowe, and Jenny Norton Wright. Daniel's there again. He's probably a <laughs> mistake, but uh, I know that he does a lot in this area, so <laughs> well mentioned twice. Um, Again, another area that's of huge importance to the library, the vast amounts of our collections are in all sorts of uh, different languages and scripts. Uh, we need to make much bigger advances um, on all sorts of different scripts in relation to automatic recognition. Otherwise, we are going to stay where we are now, which is sorts of research projects that are really heavily biased already towards uh, Latin scripts. So this is one area that is of massive importance to us. The next project, uh, Google Sheets add-on uh, for um, web archives, uh, worked on by Andy Jackson at British Library and St Tom Storer at the National Archives. So what they've done is uh, added on um, Google Sheets to allow people who are working with web archives to quickly compare URLs, URLs and work out which one of these are. Uh, held at the British Library or at the National Archives. Sometimes as institutions, we have slightly complicated arrangements what who collect what. And this is a project that kind of goes around that and help users to actually navigate this space more easy. The next one, massive project, uh, UK Web Archive New User Interface, uh, worked on by Andrew Jackson, Nicola Bingham, and Jason Weber. Um, we have been running UK Web Archive for a number of years. Um, it's central to uh, so many things that the library does. And over a period of time, the team has created a new search interface, which hopefully makes life much easier for everyone. And as you can imagine, uh, it's a massive project because this is the service that keeps going while we are uh, doing all these big transformational things behind the scenes. Uh, the next project, the Pelagius Web Maps working group, Gethin Rees and Adi Keenan Schumber. This is the project that has produced white paper looking how we provide some guidelines about visualization of spatial temporal data. So effectively, everything that is um, happening in this area uh, that, is, uh, that is around effectively um, improving ge uh, geospatial discovery is one thing that is really growing on our agenda, and not just ours, but many other institutions. And I think we are going to have some really important new projects coming in this area. So are other institutions. So if we don't start having the projects that are looking into, um, into all sorts of um, areas, how we standardize and approach these issues, then it's going to be more confusion coming rather than clarity. So very important project. One that is particularly pertinent for today, 
100 days offensive post is tweeted by the Library Untold Lives Twitter account. Um, it, uh, 100 days offensive, uh, as you might know, is a uh, sort of events that have led to the end of the First World War and the armistice. And uh, we hugely encourage uh, our teams to focus on communication of our digital collections. And this is one um, such project uh, where um, they, uh, over time, have created the posters that very visually help people to explore this sort of area. Another one uh, from our team called BL Made Digital. BL Made Digital um, is um, uh, an internal, if you want, name for um, for um, our own digitization efforts and how we understand them in-house. And they have also been running a Twitter campaign where they were looking at different languages. So the theme of language is coming on again. And what they try to do is to explore one language a week, um, helping to engage people with our material and therefore help us to improve discovery. So here um, we have before we go to runner-up and a winner, we have a special mention. Uh, we were just um, so taken by uh, what qualities, what quality of what colleagues have submitted that we decided uh, that we need more than only two top awards. So uh, special mentions, appropriately on this day, goes to hundreds of the offensive posters tweeted by the library's Untold Live Twitter account. So unfortunately, neither Jeremy or Margaret are able to be with us today due to other work, but uh, we will pass the news, um, and uh, we were very much uh, taken by the quality of this project. Um, so the runner-up for this category is BL Made Digital at, at two unknown Twitter campaign. All right, thank you so much for this award. Um, so yes, our campaign was basically to use our team's Twitter account um, to explore our collections through the lens of language, one language a week. Um, on the right, you see the languages that we've gone through so far. Um, one thing that ties them together is that we chose to only feature languages that have been written at least sometimes in non-Latin scripts, so we could really feature some of the lesser known collections in our language and the digitized content in our that we have put published online. And obviously we're not the only ones um, on Twitter from the British Library. There's about 40 departmental accounts and countless um, staff accounts as well, um, who many of them listed here, um, engaged with our campaign and shared materials from their collections um, with us directly using the hashtag A to unknown. Um, each week we um, explored a range of different digitized collections um, including um, digitized manuscripts, books, um, linked to our collection guides, um, tips to our catalog and where people could discover um, more materials on their own. Um, we changed our banner each week um, to different um, items related to that language. It had to be very creative in some cases. So for Egyptian week, um, we chose this Egyptian dream book from our printed heritage materials. Um, also, one of the most popular things that we did um, were our weekly Sudoku. Um, so, um, as you see um, over there, I don't know if anybody can guess the script, that's Armenian. Um, but each week we post a Sudoku using um, nine letters from whatever script is used to, um, to write in the featured language of the week. Um, and um, then have also gotten people involved in doing um, uh, quizzes and asking questions um, and tried to encourage um, engagement with our materials as well. Um, so definitely, our, I think our favorite part of this campaign, in addition with engaging with um, staff around the library, was engaging with people, with communities around the world who um, are, are tied to these collections in some way. Um, so as you can see down here on the bottom left, we have our follower map around the world. So we've been really growing um, the people that we've been engaging with. Um, and then who the person who got a special mention earlier today, Tim Brooks, has taken our idea of our, um, our Sudokus and ran within has created his own um, line of endangered alphabet Sudoku. Um, it's well available on his website. Um, so one thing I'd just like to say is when um, we first started this campaign, I came and pitched the idea to Mahendra, so about a year ago today, and he was very um, 
encouraging and enthusiastic, which we really appreciated. Uh, but one of the pieces of advice that he gave us was to prepare about three months of content in advance of starting the campaign, which is um, great advice. Uh, but in reality, this is something that we decided to do um, in our extra time outside of our core work. So just um, just a little something extra um, to do with our with our Twitter account and let us um, understand our collections a lot better. Um, and then another thing is that these aren't just collections um, that are held here at the British Library and that we publish online. They, they're about real people. Um, they're tied to, to people and places all around the world. And these people, um, you know, there's geopolitical events in the world, online conversations shift. We had to be very agile in our approach and, and realize that um, the platform that we're using was Twitter and we had to um, engage with the conversations that people were having the days that we were tweeting as well. Um, and that's all just to say that, you know, we don't have that much time in our work where we're all very, very busy. Um, but we chose to use the extra time that we did have to try to do something impactful, um, be creative, have a little fun, um, but definitely bring as many people along for the ride as you can because um, it's a lot more fun that way and you'll learn a lot. So I just wanted to thank everybody that's engaged with this campaign um, for helping us understand our collections better and helping us to connect them to communities around the world. So thank you to everyone. <laughs> and for the British Library Staff Award, our winner is British Library Qatar Foundation Project Imogen Hack Days. I can see very large uh, team coming for a photo. Uh, while they're coming, just to say that what's especially impressive about this is we are a very large organization and collaborating in large numbers is always award-winning strategy. So well done for the large team that has done such an amazing job together. Okay, uh, so thank you uh, for, the, for the award today. Uh, we're, we're really thankful to, um, to receive it. Um, a little bit about the project that we all work on. Uh, we're digitizing material um, from the British Library's archive, but we're working in partnership with the Qatar Foundation, uh, Qatar Foundation and the Qatar National Library. Um, over the years, the, the six plus years that we've been digitizing, we've put a lot of effort into making things um, as standardized as possible, and that includes the images. So when we're capturing images, we make sure that everything looks the same, uh, that it's all captured in the same format, and all those kinds of things. Um, however, the great irony of digitization is in our imaging studio, we ask for creative uh, and highly qualified people to come and work and ask them to do a very repetitive and boring job. So, um, taking some inspiration from our colleagues at uh, CARGAP, who are in the, some of whom are in the audience today, um, decided to, to run uh, a couple of hack days where we gave our imaging technicians, who are all crowded around me, and refused to talk. Um, we gave them the opportunity to use their creative skills for a whole day, working on the collections that we're digitizing, and come up with some interesting um, uh, outputs. Um, <clears throat> now, when I spoke to most people about this idea, they kind of looked at me blankly and nodded politely, except for these guys. And I think this is one of the things about um, the BL Labs Awards, is that they took this opportunity and they, they, they said yes, they ran with it, and they made it much better than I could ever um, anticipate it being. Um, so over the next few slides, I'm going to run through a couple of the outputs. They're all credited. None of this is my work. I just came up with a, a harebrained scheme. Um, on the left-hand side, this is one of our manuscripts that was heavily... Um, uh, uh, eaten by um, uh, insects during, during um, its storage with us at the Rich Library. And uh, using Photoshop, we removed the target page and highlighted the holes so they appeared white. And then we did this for each of the manuscript, uh, for each of the manuscript pages and animated it so you could see uh, the, the, in, the, the journey of the insects throughout the whole volume. Um, a weird, a weird twist of fate was that this manuscript was from our Arabic scientific manuscripts, and it was actually entitled Four Treaties on Astronomy, and it looked a lot like um, a, a constellation of stars. On the left hand, on the right hand side, the other side, uh, we have an image which was originally in black and white, a photograph from our collection, and working with one of our 
uh, historical experts, Daniel, uh, colorize this image. And the, our historical experts suggested historically accurate colors, uh, including the green sash, which, was, um, um, which was, would have been worn by uh, that, uh, someone from that member of that tribe, and the white turban would have signified their status as well. So it was a really nice collaboration between our imaging staff and some of our, um, hist our historical experts. On the next page, uh, we have, uh, on, our right, on the right-hand side, a zine which was produced by Hannah, Hannah Nagel. Uh, and this, this incorporated collection items, but also data visualizations. And it wasn't just bar charts and, and your standard data visualizations. She used her imaging skills to tell stories about the, the women uh, in, uh, in our collection. Um, and, and probably more accurately, the lack of women in our collection. Uh, we have a, an astrolabe quadrant, which Geordie used his photography skills to, to capture much more detail than we could do in our standard practices. And Darren also produced a resource which, which anyone could use to, to create their own astrolabe. Uh, and we have a, we have a mock-up version here. Finally, we also in, engaged with... Um, uh, with social media, and, and for our second Hack Day, we, had, we were themed around International Women's Day, and Rebecca produced a, a Twitter banner using uh, pictures of women from our collection. Uh, and this, this, this was used on the partnership's uh, Twitter account. The other image uh, is taken from uh, one of Matt's experiments, which uh, each square on the on the on the composite that you see is a pixel from one of one of our sh our shelf marks. So when you look through the items on our on the uh, Cattle Digital Library, a lot of the items are uh, look look very beige. And um, what this what this really uh, nicely shows is there's actually a lot of colour variation uh, in the uh, in the pages that we're digitising. And then one, one more. So on the, the left-hand side, we have uh, some, some, uh, oh no, uh, yeah, some work for, uh, by Melanie, uh, who concentrated on the visual aspects of the, the collection and, combi and made combinations that we wouldn't normally capture in our, in our standard um, uh, uh, imaging process. Uh, and on the right-hand side, our quality, our quality assurance officer uh, worked with the collection and and some open source software, well, web-based software, uh, to produce uh, story maps. So she took some journeys uh, from within the collection that we're digitizing and mapped them out on this, uh, this free-to-use software and included images and links to the, to the digitized material. I, I, I'm, being, I'm being prompted. I should also <laughs> mention, Geordie mocked up some, uh, some, uh, yeah, some prototypes of tote bags that we're hoping to one day see in the British Library shop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>